Now, my number three game of all time is the third game from that top three PS1 RPGs video, and that is Star Ocean, The Second Story. To me, in my opinion, once again, I, I got the North American version, I got the Japanese version, complete with all the sales packaging and stuff like that, just, um, I got them all. To me, Star Ocean, The Second Story is the best Japanese role-playing game ever made. It's better than anyone, any any of the other ones. If you if you name a game, any of them, and I'm telling Super Nintendo, you know, Final Fantasy VI, Chrono Trigger, whatever you got, bring your big gun, because I'll shoot it down with Star Wars in the second story. There is so much to that game. It's you have full like recipe books you can fill out. You can become an alchemist to make your own potions. It's almost an Elder Scrolls game, if you think about it. Um, there's so much to do. There are so many different endings. I think it has 18 different endings, depending on your relationships between all of the characters. And trust me, I've, I have i don't think I've gotten all of them, but I think I've gotten like 15 of them. There's so much to say about the game. I love the way it controls the battle system, where you have the 3D, where you can actually run around and uh, actually set up your attacks and all the combinations you can do. The Even the gumpy voice acting, the little voice files that play like Huyo and Dragon Claw and all that stuff. That well, that's work. somewhere around 80 points. I love it. I love all of it. It's from its own era. It, it's a very, it, it's a timestamp. It, it's a point in time for a genre. Um, and the best way I can say this is the PlayStation 1, that era, is the golden age of RPGs. And Star Ocean 2 is the best one. It is the best of the best era. There is no better Japanese role-playing game than Star Wars from the Second Story. And it's easily in my top three. And like I said, it, for a long time, it was number one. Um, but yeah, number three game of all time, Star Wars from the Second Story. Please play it. It's on PSP. It's on PlayStation 1. Uh, do whatever you got to do, man. Just, just get it. Oh, just get it. So amazing. All right, so there you go. A fun little blast to the past. 2018 seems like forever ago and also not too long ago. Um, you notice that now I have a little bit more gray in the beard. <laughs> it's amazing what, you know, uh, five years does. But five years ago in my top 25 games of all time, Star Ocean The Second Story was my number three, and I still think that holds up today. I said a lot of glowing stuff, as you could see. And I still agree with all of it. I think Star Ocean The Second Story is the best Japanese role-playing game ever made. And the fact that Square Enix has kind of gone all out and did a rebirth of it. Um, Star Ocean The Second Story R is coming out as of right now in three days. And I've had the demo, which I have not played yet. Uh, but that's what we're going to be playing in this episode. They've done a whole bunch of stuff. They've um, changed the battle system. They've done a full, like, kind of graphics overhaul uh, to make it more in line with kind of that Octopath Traveler 2.5D uh, look. They've added, like, mini games. They've um, brought in some kind of director's cut content. A lot has gone into this, and part of me is elated. A vast majority of me is elated. I, I can't wait to dig into this. I can't wait to see what this is about. However, part of me is also kind of nervous, because in my opinion, you're tampering with perfection. So are they adding too much stuff? Is everything there? Um, is it welcome? Is it something that's going to add to the experience? I mean, I adore... The original Star Ocean 2. So, are these changes going to be good? There's only one way to find out. Let's dig into the demo and take a look at Star Ocean The Second Story R. Alright, so here we are. Star Ocean The Second Story R. It's the demo. And the demo... Uh, has been out for about a month now, but I've waited. I've waited until a few days leading up before launch. So the game's actually coming out November 2nd, and right now it's October 29th, so a little before Halloween. And yeah, only a few days left to go, and yeah, I wanted to like wait until I was as close as possible to the release date. That way 
your uh, save file transfers over to the full game. So I knew once I started playing this, I would not probably want to stop. And, you know, I'm about an hour in. The save file says two hours and 11 minutes because I had to leave the game running. Uh, step away from the computer for a bit. But uh, the music is so good. The remastered arrangements are incredible. So having that on while I was doing other stuff. But the demo does have a time limit of three hours. And you can only get up to level 12 with the characters. And it, it goes up until uh, Cross Cave, at the end of Cross Cave. So, let's just jump in, and uh, so you can see it does have um, some autosave features, which is really cool. The original game does not have that. Uh, but yeah, we will slot one right here. I, I chose the Claude way. Uh, you can choose between Claude or Reyna, and that's one of the cool things about Star Ocean, is you can genuinely replay it multiple times over, not only as different characters, but each one of those characters, you can recruit different characters within their game. So there's stuff that's exclusive to Claude that Reyna will not be able to get, and vice versa. And each of those have characters that you can miss depending on what choices that you make. So you can realistically play through this game five or six times to really get everything and uh, unlock everything and hey, mister. it's very very exciting huh if you're gonna leave the village you better stay close to the road okay the forest is really so dangerous. the reason why I actually recorded Thanks. the first part up into this point and one the sound quality was a little weird on my microphones in but I got that sorted out but really I'm almost glad it worked out that way because this is the part of the game that I like the best is actually going out into the field and battling. Now, oh, cool, okay. That was one of my questions. Can you rotate the world map? Now, this is completely redone graphics, uh, much like the Live Alive, Octopath Traveler, Triangle Strategy, that sort of like 2.5D, high def, depth of field, you know, bokeh lighting, really good stylized, slick looking graphics. But there's a certain charm about the PlayStation 1 original that I adore. I, I love those graphics. I love the really rudimentary 3D. I love all of it. The texture warping, even all the stuff that say that people say looks ugly. I love it. I think it's incredible. I think it's a game of its time. Super creative. And my big worry coming into the game was that whenever they kind of spruce everything up, it would lose some personality. And I'm happy to say so far that's not the case. This feels like, this feels like somebody telling me the story of Star Ocean 2, if that makes sense. Like, it's different. Um, so this is a big one. I think you can, there's no random encounters anymore on the world map. I think you can see your enemies and you can like stack them up to get bonuses and stuff. It's like way different, almost like a, I think Bravely Default 2 did that. Um, yeah, so, okay, an enemy symbol from the front will begin a battle. Behind, trigger a back attack. Okay. So they've changed so much about the game, but, oh man. Wow, that looks great. <laughs> that looks really good, actually. Oh my god. Um, oh, and there's like exploration stuff already and Be careful. Right. so back attack a left trigger and L switch target pull right to lock and lock okay time to stop during input press A perform perfect counter yeah there's like a lot of there's a lot of different stuff here. Go protect counters. So yeah, they redid this whole fighting engine. Man, like the whole thing is different. Alright. That was easier than I thought. So right now I'm playing on Galaxy. I think that's the the medium difficulty. Oh, 
I saw a treasure chest over here, so. Close. Start this battle. That's one for us. So this is how I play probably 50 to 60 hours of Star Wars games. Is I just grind. I grind out like crazy. It's already level four. I think you can get up to level twelve in the demo, which is pretty good. Definitely strong enough for like cross cave. Some of those enemies get a little wacky uh, near the end of the dungeon, especially. Than I thought. So yeah, I'm really just button mashing right now. Um, early game, you can get away with that. But I love the way this looks, man. I love the way it looks. It feels great. I know the game comes out in three days, but it's going to be a long three-day wait after I <laughs> after I play through this uh, bit. But yeah, I'm just going to level it up, man. And the nice thing is, at the town we were at, you can stay over at the mayor's house for free... So you get free, like, recovery, free healing. It's great. I do like that it's tracking the level up and the XP on a bar. That's the type of stuff that gets me playing a game forever. Is just, if I'm making progress, no matter what kind of game it is. But Japanese role-playing games are great for that. If you find a good kind of grind point... Like a, an area of the game where you can battle over and over. And also there's either a cheap or free way that you can heal. I'll spend tens of hours just doing that. Over and over. It's great. Maybe my favorite thing in video games. <laughs> but yeah, it's so, it's so wild to me that so many kind of classic... Japanese role-playing games are getting this type of treatment, not necessarily the Octopath treatment, which is true, like Live Alive did, or uh, Live a Live, or however you pronounce it. That definitely did, but really, like, Suikoden is getting their remasters done. Botan Kaitos came out for the Switch, and I'm really enjoying that as well. I just like the fact that this era of Japanese role-playing game is being celebrated. You know what I mean? Because to me, this is the golden era. I, I said that in the opening that, you know, the PlayStation 1 era, in my opinion, is the best era for Japanese role-playing games. And this is the best of the best. So to have those games, the only thing I need, really, is a, a Breath of Fire collection. Like, Breath of Fire 3, especially. But sadly, I think with Breath of Fire 3, they actually lost the source code to it, which is sad. Um, oh hey, level up? Yeah, buddy. Level 5. I think they lost the source code to Breath of Fire 3, which is a shame. You know, it had a PSP port as well. But maybe Capcom can, like, just get an emulator and, like, Breath of Fire 4 is great. I mean, I love all the Breath of Fire games. They're all well, I'd say that's worth solid. Um, I never played 6, because 6 was on a mobile phone, and it was like a gotcha game. Which upset me greatly. But yeah, I can literally run around and do this for hours. No doubt in my mind. And it looks like there's an auto battle. Which is pretty cool too, especially at in-game. There's some in-game grinding that can get fairly tedious. This stuff, early game, is just super enjoyable. But man, the uh, the late game stuff, oh buddy. So let's come over here. We can win this. I hope. Ha, ha, got you. 
So you notice I'm not really using any of my special abilities or anything. I should probably do that just to show them off. And then we can go heal up, even though we haven't taken a hit, I don't think. <laughs> but these early game enemies, man, they're easy, easy. But yeah, being able to rotate the world view, I remember being blown away. Oh man, look at the birds. Oh yeah. Um, back on the PlayStation 1, anytime there was a role-playing game where you got onto a world map and you can rotate it, it immediately got in, like, my top 20 games ever. <laughs> you know, like, any of the Final Fantasies, any of the... Oh, wait a minute, hold on. Let, let me back, back up out of this. Did you guys see this? Hold on. Oh, okay. That's, like, the water going and the, uh... The trees and stuff. I thought you could see people walking around in the city. But no, it's just the water and stuff. But still, that's rad. And then, yeah, we can save here. What's it say? Oh man, I only have 45 more minutes. Oh man. <laughs> we can come here. There's the newlywed couple's house. Here's the mayor's house. We can come here. What's up, bro? I think it's here. Or do I talk to the lady? Or hold on. Hello. Yes, okay. Talk to her. did notice also down here this is kind of a newish area and I believe you can do fishing which they've added they've added a ton of stuff I, I think this is essentially like a director's cut of the game it's based off the PSP version the uh, second evolution or no it might not be I don't know I need to check the script because they slightly changed the script in Second Evolution. But this is Second Story R, so they may have taken the original script. I don't know, man. But yeah, so far this is, uh... This is kind of living up to the hype. I didn't want to get too excited. And I'll tell you why. Whenever you hear about a revisioning of one of your favorite things, whether it's like a movie or a book or a video game, whatever very more like more often than not it kind of goes sideways like the original already exists and w with Star Ocean 2 it's like okay any changes you're making you're playing a weird balancing act because I think you're messing with something close to perfection you know so whenever I was like oh they you know they're bringing back Star Ocean's second story I was like that's cool that's really cool I wanted it to be a direct port, like, kind of upscaled. I would be totally fine with that. I'd pay tons of money for it. You know what I mean? Like, great. I already have the game on multiple systems and multiple versions, but I'd buy it again. And then I saw they did all this, and I was like, hmm, is it going to be the same game that I fell in love with back in, you know, 1998? And so far, I think so. I think this has done a nice balance of doing the, uh, you know, doing way more than, like, the bare minimum. Really putting in the time to understanding what made the game cool in the first place. And just emphasizing that. Like, really pushing that to the forefront. Because it can go one of two ways, right? Like, with video games, it can go it can go the way of, like, Final Fantasy VII Remake, which just completely blew the doors off, and oh my gosh, and it makes you fall in love even more with the original. 
or you have the other side of the spectrum, which is like Warcraft 3, uh, Reforged, or whatever they called it. Dreadful launch. They took away everything that made the game interesting. Um, the game didn't feel the same. They made it to where you could never play the original game again because you have to use this new thing. Like, it was just a bad time all the way around. Um, this is very much in the first category. This is closer to that Final Fantasy VII remake um, as far as just really understanding the assignment. I said I'd use special abilities, and I still have not done that. So let's do that. This time, that's our goal. That is our goal. Come on, bad guys. And I think you can stack, like, groups of bad guys together. Is that true? Hold on. Hey, bud. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yes. You saw the line. There was a line there. Take this. Ah! That's one for us. Oh, but I think the line broke beforehand. Because I want to say it does like... It either bundles up the enemies from both fights and you fight them at once. Or you do back-to-back -back fights. I need to see. Let's figure it out. No. Come on, bud. There we go. Okay, let's see what this is. Chain battle. Okay, so it stacks them. Enemy link occurs when multiple enemy symbols are connected in a straight line. Countering link symbols will result in consecutive battles. When we up to five consecutive battles, the more consecutive battles, the greater the bonus um, fall and XP you are. That's sick. That's super cool. That's gonna make in-game grinding way better. Like, way better. There's one. Does it hop right back? Maybe yes it does. Cool. And then 1.5 XP. Oh dude. We're gonna have ourselves a field day in this game. It's like the deluxe edition, dude. Oh yeah, bud. Yeah, this is gonna be a long three-day wait. <laughs> I was so worried, guys. Seriously, I was so worried that they wouldn't, that this wouldn't live up to, you know, because I play Star Wars from the Second Story probably, probably once a year. I load it up, create a new save file, probably get 30 hours into it, even if I don't beat it every time. All right, let's try this. Come here. All right. No, 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 no. Come here, come here, come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I wanted three. Okay, anyway. Um... See ya. See ya. Um, I was so nervous that they'd get it wrong. But, they seem to be adding all the right type of stuff. Keep the veterans playing. You know what I mean? But, I will say, if you're brand new to Star Ocean, if you've never played a Star Ocean before, or, hell, if you've never played a Japanese role-playing game before, I do recommend this one. I really do. I think this is going to be one of those that, like, this can kickstart a, a, a sordid love affair of Japanese role-playing games, if you're not careful. Um, yeah, I can wholeheartedly recommend... Yes, I got three. Okay. Oh! Oh, I got jacked, though. Run, run, run. Oh. Long way. Long way, bud. Okay, one. Be careful. Mm. You try that perfect dodge. They said some something like that, right? Like So the perfect dodge immediately transport you back behind them so you can get a critical hit. Oh, dude, this is rad. This game's awesome. 
I have a big old grin on my face right now. Y'all don't even know. Um, yeah. All right. Ooh, check out that thing back there. Wonder what's happening. Anyway, let's do let's do another another fight. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ah, oh, I only got the two. Then we'll go save, and then we'll call it. Because I will literally, I will spend hours here on the full game. Just to kind of get, come to terms and come to grips with the battle system. Get blueberries. But there's so much to this game. There's a ton of stuff to this game. Multiple endings, multiple characters to recruit. You have your cooking mini games. You have now you have fishing. Um, man, they really went all out on this one. Let's go save at the uh, the mayor's house. Doop doop doop. Then we'll go check in and see what Green is doing. And I do love the fact that they kept the original sprite work. Like, they've up it and they've kept it pixelated. Um, but I love that. I think it's a perfect balance of mixing and having, you know, uh, reverence for the old stuff while making it feel new. Because this is the same run animations, this is the same... It feels the same on a controller as well. Like, the running feels... The timing... I, like, they they got it. Let's go to Rena's house. Hi, Rena's mom. Yeah, I know Rena's not in. She's at the town, next town over. Spoilers, I guess. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything. Literally, if you've never played Star Wars in the second story, do yourself a favor. Now's a perfect time to jump in. Um, I... I'm crazy about this game, as we all know. So let me save, and then I'll tell you guys what I did. I'm go over here, let's save, boom. All right, I have a half hour to go, that's fine. Okay, so I'll run around and show you some of the locales while I tell you what I did. So I bought the digital version of this game on every platform it's available on. I also bought the physical version of this game on every platform it's available on. And I also bought the PlayStation 5 Collector's Edition that's exclusive on the Square Enix store. So like, yeah, I'm, I, I, take, I take this game fairly seriously. <laughs> it is my top, in my top three games of all time. So anytime they do this type of treatment um, to a game, it's, you know, big smile on my face. Ironically, last week, the Metal Gear Solid uh, kind of remastered collection, or Master Collection Volume 1, I think it's called, that came out, and I did the same thing. Every digital version on everything that's available on. Um, I need to get the PlayStation 5 physical. But, yeah, like... <laughs> There's only two games ahead of this game in my uh, top 25 of all time. My number two game is Metal Gear Solid 3, which is part of that Master Collection. And then the first one, my number one game, is Deus Ex, the original that came out in like 2001. Incredible game. Um, Mind-blowing stuff. But this one's number three, man. This game is no slouch. It is the best of the best. The writing's good, the characterization's great, the way the characters interact, the ability to replay the game and actually get quite a bit more out of it, and this game has a new game plus. I can't remember if the PSP game had that or not. I love a boy. So yeah, this very much feels like a PlayStation 1 era game, but made to, uh, you know, made to really 
really showcase um, the quality of, your, of life improvements as far as like gameplay and controller stuff and settings and so here's a thing that threw me off before we before we say goodbye on this episode here's a thing that threw me for a loop okay here's Arlia shop where you can buy some recipes and herbs and stuff but watch this as a film kid you need anything today buy sell steam store I laughed out loud when I saw steam store on here like I'm not a huge guy I'm like oh my immersion but like any sense of immersion gone <laughs> they know about steam they have steam and and stars from the second story anyway um yeah you get a whole bunch of stuff uh Let's buy one pair. Yes. That's fine. Healing armor. Okay. So here's something else that's pretty cool. I'm going to close out. Thanks. Equip wizard. You can set this up in your settings menu, uh, on your kind of main menu options, to where you will automatically equip your best equipment, which is really helpful to get through a majority of the game. Later on in the game, you will want to customize some things there are certain enemy types and certain bosses to where you actually don't want to be at peak power um but this is such a great you know you can either equip to uh, choose to not equip it to anybody or equip it to the character it's best used for so we're gonna hit yes better equipped right there let me come over here um oh also the nice uh hint system where claude is giving us advice on where to go next. Uh, smells, special arts, you get your phase gun, those are in your bumper buttons. Uh, equipment, of course you have all your staples, man. Uh, your accessories, your accessories. Improve combat skills. Oh yes, battle points. So battle points, you can spend these battle points. The best one that you wanna do, um, random guarantees, reduces, Increases enemy speed. Cuts casting time for spells. So, there's not... Is that the right thing? Okay, yes. Oh, here's where the other one... You're, you're just overall, as a person, stats. Not necessarily your combat skills, but your, your personality traits. Um, my big pro tip, if you're going to get this game, you've never played it before. There's an ability that gives you a discount on all other abilities, get that one first. It's gonna make your life way easier, way faster. Um, I'm not even the biggest min-maxer, but I've played this game so much that that is the first thing I do, is I, I get that all the way to, so, you know, get all the way to max level on that as fast as possible, and then everything else you get at like a 70% discount. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, so tactics, um, also you can put, you know, your characters in the front, party formation, in the front, in the back, um, different rows, depending, um, and then your strategy. Oh, and you can set your AI, whatever you want the AI to do. So I usually keep it at fight with a good balance. However, if I know I'm going into a place that they have some real heavy hitters, uh, I always use protect your allies. Um, and then if there is um, enemies that get healed by magic, which does happen in a few places, I think. Uh, you can use don't use MP, and it's going to make sure that none of your none of your party uses um, any other magic spells. So there's fun stuff like that. It's fun little puzzle solving. There's some great narrative stuff. There's great characterizations. The story's actually really awesome and solid. I highly recommend, like, really just enjoying your first go round through it. And then if you're like me and you just fall in love with it you're going to want to play through it again, and that way you can change, you know, I'm Claude on this playthrough, let's say I'm Rain on next playthrough, and I can equip the different people and get different endings, depending on choices you make during the game. Also, the people that you get as part of your party on the side quests, those change, plus the ending changes depending on who you recruit. Like I said, nuts. This game has a ton going for it. It's a huge game. Um, so much fun, man. I'm... I'm stoked. I'm stoked that this is coming out, that I have like every version of it now. 
<laughs> adding to my Star Ocean physical collection, which I own every Star Ocean game ever made in physical. You know, even Blue Sphere, uh, which is the Game Boy Color game. Uh, I have that. I have a fan translated cart edition of it. Actually, I'm going to show my little collection right here. Um, and that's just the separate games that I have. You can see the Star Ocean Famicom game. Um, yeah, there's First Departure and Second Evolution for the PSP, which I have, but they were in storage. Great series. Amazing stuff. Um, we'll save over that again, just to be sure, because you never know. But that is it. That is um, our look at Star Ocean Second Story R. Cannot wait for the next three days. Yeah, this game comes out on the 2nd of November. If you like JRPGs, even if you've never played one before, but you want kind of a big adventure with a lovable cast of characters, a lot of kind of political intrigue, and you even have a little bit of Star Trek, like, Prime Directive stuff. You know, if Claude C. Kinney's from another planet, and he's part of the Federation, what is he allowed to do on a planet that might not know who he is do you know what i mean like you could change the course of the future of this planet but is that within your rights to do so interesting moral stuff happening here as well uh, a lot of fun just it's the best of the best this is top tier as it gets it looks like they're gonna knock it out of the park with this remake just, i'm elated beside myself the fact that my kids will be able to play this you know what i mean like, they're going to play the original as well. I'm going to make sure of it. But this is just, they're more likely to want to play this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Better voice acting. Um, yeah, just so much good stuff going on. But that's my time. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for waxing nostalgic uh, with me. And, yeah, we will see you on November 2nd, Claude C. Kenny. And you guys take care. Have fun. And we'll see you next time on Wes vs. Backlog.